Let's get straight to the point. Number eight, the ration your water trap. Picture this, you are stranded in the desert. The sun is a laser beam aimed at your head. You have one bottle of water. Your instinct, fueled by bad movies, says save it. So you take tiny sips. Congratulations, you played yourself. This is the deadliest myth because it sounds logical, but rationing water when dehydrated is suicide. Rescue teams constantly find bodies fully dead with half-full canteens next to them. Why? Because dehydration is sneaky. It doesn't just make you thirsty, it shuts down your brain. As fluid levels drop, judgment evaporates. You get confused, delirious, and eventually forget you have water. By the time you decide it's time to drink, you are too far gone. Science is simple. Water in your bottle does zero good. It needs to be in your cells. Your body is the only canteen that matters. Keeping water in a plastic bottle while your organs shut down is like saving ammo in a video game until the credits roll. If you are thirsty, drink. A hydrated brain can find more water. A dead one cannot. Number seven, sucking out the venom. We have all seen the action hero get bitten by a cobra, whip out a knife, slice the wound X style, and spit out the poison. It looks tough. It looks heroic. It is also completely moronic. If you actually try this, you are not saving a life. You are just doubling the casualty count. Here is the biology lesson Hollywood ignores. Snake venom isn't some slow-moving syrup you can just slurp back up. It enters the bloodstream and lymphatic system almost instantly. By the time you lean down to play vampire, that venom is already halfway to the victim's heart. You literally cannot suck fast enough to beat the circulatory system. Even worse, the human mouth is a disgusting cesspool of bacteria. By putting your mouth on an open wound, you are introducing millions of nasty germs directly into a compromised immune system, basically guaranteeing a massive infection on top of the necrosis. Also, if you have even a tiny micro-cut on your lip or gums, congratulations, now you are envenomated too. Now the rescue team has two dying idiots to deal with instead of one. Don't cut, don't suck. Keep the limb low and get to a hospital. Number six, the moss compass fallacy. You are deep in the forest, your GPS is dead and panic is setting in. Suddenly, you spot a fuzzy green patch on an oak tree. You remember that old nugget of wisdom, Moss always grows on the north side of the tree. You confidently march in that direction, straight off a cliff. Here is the deal. Moss does not care about cardinal directions. Moss is a simple organism with simple needs. It wants moisture and shade. That is it. While it is true that in the northern hemisphere, the north side of a tree generally gets less direct sunlight, nature is way more chaotic than a textbook. Trees shade other trees. Slopes create microclimates. A humid breeze can make moss grow on the south, east, or west side with zero hesitation. If the forest is dense enough, moss will grow all the way around the trunk like a fuzzy sweater. Relying on this is navigation roulette. You are not following a compass, you are following humidity. Unless you want to play a game of guess which way is damp, look at the sun, or bring a real compass. Moss is a plant, not a GPS. Number five, punching a shark in the nose. This is the absolute peak of bro science survival tips. We have all heard it. If a great white charges you, just bop it on the snout and it will swim away in shame. In reality, this is the quickest way to turn your hand into an appetizer. Let's look at the physics. Have you ever tried to throw a serious punch underwater? It feels like fighting in a slow motion nightmare. Water is roughly 800 times denser than air. Your epic Mike Tyson haymaker turns into a gentle, pathetic tap by the time it lands. You simply cannot generate the velocity to hurt a 2,000 pound killing machine that has remained evolutionarily perfect for millions of years. Then there is the aim. The nose is a small, moving target situated millimeters above rows of serrated butcher knives. If you miss by an inch, your fist goes straight into the chomp zone. Plus, shark skin is made of dermal denticles, literal tiny teeth. You will shred your knuckles. If you are attacked, stop boxing. Gouge the eyes or rip the gills. Those are the only weak points. Punching a shark is just ringing the dinner bell with your fist. Number four, the booze jacket myth. 
We have all seen the cartoons with the St. Bernard dog carrying a little barrel of brandy to save the frozen traveler. It is a classic image. You are shivering in a snowbank, you take a swig of whiskey, and a magical warmth spreads through your chest. You think the alcohol is saving you. In reality, it is aggressively murdering you. Here is the science. Alcohol is a potent vasodilator. It forces your blood vessels to open wide. This rushes all the warm blood away from your vital core, your heart, lungs, and brain, and sends it flooding to your skin. That warm and fuzzy sensation? That is literally the feeling of your body heat leaving your vital organs and radiating uselessly into the freezing air. You are essentially turning your body into a space heater for the snow. Your skin feels hot, but your internal temperature is nosediving into hyperthermia territory. To make matters worse, alcohol suppresses your shivering reflex. Shivering is your body's last-ditch effort to create heat, and the booze shuts it off. You won't even shake while you freeze to death. Drinking in the cold is like opening all the windows in your house to warm up the siding. It feels great for five minutes, and then the lights go out permanently. Number 3. The Cactus Water Cocktail This is the most dangerous desert myth of all time, thanks to old westerns. The hero, parched and desperate, slices off the top of a cactus and ladles out crystal clear, refreshing water. In the real world, doing this is a shortcut to the afterlife. Cacti are not biological water coolers waiting for you to tap them. They are complex chemical factories designed to deter herbivores. The fluid inside the vast majority of cacti isn't water. It is a noxious, highly acidic slime packed with toxic alkaloids. It tastes like bitter battery acid mixed with snot. If you choke this sludge down, your body will immediately recognize it as poison. The result? Violent vomiting and severe diarrhea. When you are already dehydrated, puking is a death sentence. It drains your remaining fluids and electrolytes at lightning speed. Instead of extending your life, you have just accelerated the dehydration process. There is technically one species, the fishhook barrel cactus, that is somewhat safe. But unless you are a master botanist, you won't be able to tell the difference. Taking a gamble on a random cactus is like playing Russian roulette with your kidneys. Leave the prickly plants alone. Number 2. The Snow Cone Diet You are lost in the mountains, surrounded by miles of pristine white snow. You are thirsty. It looks like an infinite slurpy machine just for you. So you start munching on handfuls of the white stuff. Big mistake. You are not solving your problem. You are essentially committing thermal suicide. Here is why. Physics is a cruel mistress. Snow is not water. It is frozen water. For your body to absorb it, that snow has to undergo a phase change from solid to liquid. That requires a massive amount of energy, specifically the latent heat of fusion. Where does that energy come from? Your core body heat. You are taking your precious internal furnace and dumping literal ice buckets on it. Every mouthful strips heat away from your vital organs, accelerating the onset of hypothermia significantly. You will freeze to death from the inside out long before you die of thirst. Furthermore, snow is mostly trapped air. You have to eat gallons of it to get a decent amount of hydration, shredding your mouth and throat lining in the process. It creates cold sores and cracks that invite infection. Never eat it raw. Melt it in a bottle against your body or over a fire. Eating snow is just trading dehydration for a frozen coffin. Number 1. The Play Dead Gamble This is the advice everyone remembers from grade school. You see a bear, you drop to the ground, curl into a fetal ball, and wait. If you do this with a black bear, you are not surviving. You are plating yourself for dinner. This myth gets people killed because it treats all bears like the same animal. They are absolutely not. Grizzly bears usually attack defensively. They are protecting cubs or territory. In that specific case, playing dead works because it signals, I am not a threat. The bear might rough you up, but it will likely leave once you stop moving. But black bears? They are smaller, scrappier, and often act as predators. If a black bear is stalking you, it likely wants to eat you. If you lay down, you are essentially telling the bear, here is your free burrito, enjoy. You have removed the hunt part of the equation for them. With black bears, you must fight back with everything you have. Scream, throw rocks, punch it in the snout. And if it is a polar bear, well, frankly, you are already a ghost. Playing dead just saves them the trouble of killing you first. Memorize your bears or you are just convenient takeout. That's all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button, share this with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for more reality checks. 
Remember, we post brand new videos every single day. So I'll see you in the next one.